we are going to find the interval of convergence for this power series. Namely, we are going to find out for what value of x will this power series converge. So what value of x can I plug in? And then I can produce a convergence series. And then we will use the ratio test. Let's go ahead and do that. So we take this as the an, but then for the ratio test, we are going to take the limit as n goes to infinity. And then we look at an plus 1 over an, which is the same as an plus 1 times 1 over an. And then we put this in absolute value. All right. For an plus 1, let's refer to this and change all the n into n plus 1. So we will first get n plus 1 in a parenthesis raised to the n plus 1 power. And then for this, we will have x to the n plus 1. All right, so this right here is the a n plus 1 term. And now we multiply by 1 over a n, which is this. And this is just going to be n to the n, x to the n. And then we include the absolute value because we don't know what x is yet. So we have to keep the absolute value. All right, so now let's see what uh, can we do to uh, simplify this expression, especially maybe this one, right? This right here is slightly more bizarre, but then you can also still break down the exponents. You can write this down as n plus 1 to the n power, and then multiply it with n plus 1 raised to the first power. Unfortunately, I don't get to cancel this one and this one out right away. But then this is the things that we can do next. Right here, we have x to the n plus 1, which is the same as x to n times x to the first. We get to cancel this one and this one out. That's pretty good. All right, so on the top, what exactly do we have? Let me put the x first. Okay, x goes first. And then perhaps I'll just put this all together. I'll put this down first, though. I will write it down as n plus 1 to the first power. And then I'll look at this over that. Especially when they both have the n power, what we can do is I can look at them as n plus 1 inside on the numerator over this n on the denominator and then raised to the n power. They both share the n power. And then this is still in the absolute value. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? All right, so now let's just break this over part. On here, we have absolute value of x, right? Because the absolute value of a product, it's the product of the absolute value. The second thing we have is absolute value of n plus 1. The third thing that we have, this is something that we can once again simplify a little bit more. This is the same as n over n plus 1 over n, which is the same as 1 over n, which is the same as 1 plus 1 over n. That's what I mean. Parentheses to the n power. And then this is, for well, the absolute value doesn't matter, but I put it down anyways. All right, so let's do a quick review. Absolute value of x goes right here, and then absolute value of n plus 1, and then the last part is 1 plus 1 over n, which is the simplified version of the inside, to the nth power, and I still keep the absolute value. Okay, It doesn't really matter with the absolute value for this and that, but then we need the absolute value right here. All right, so remember, we are still taking a limit as n goes to infinity. And let's talk about what this is all about. Let me show you, let me just tell you, this right here goes to the number e. And this is the fact that you can just use. When we have 1 plus 1 over n, parentheses, raised to the n power, as long as n goes to infinity, this will approach to the number e. Okay. But then as n goes to infinity, what happens right here? This is n plus 1. This will go to infinity. And then the x is supposed to be just any real number at the moment, right? So it can be, I don't know, just, just put it down like this. It could be like 7, 5, negative 2, whatsoever. We don't know. But then you see that it doesn't really matter what x is. The moment you multiply by infinity and then multiply by e, e times infinity is still infinity. Infinity times this is still infinity. So what we end up with is infinity. The whole thing will approach to infinity. And then I should have write this down as arrow because it's approaches to, so let me change that so we can be slightly more correct. All that approach to infinity, especially you know because of this term, okay? It's all this guy's fault. 
Anyways, this is the limit that we get, but then for the ratio test purpose, we have to set this to be less than 1. But then you see that this inequality, infinity is less than 1, which is never true. So I'll just write this down. Never true. It still doesn't matter what x is. This will always give you infinity, right? It doesn't really matter what x is because, well, you can pick 7, 20 whatsoever right here. You always end up with infinity. This is never true. And then the conclusion in this case is that the radius of convergence will be zero because you pretty much cannot choose any value for x. But then you still have one value for x that you can always use. x can be zero. Okay? So let me just tell you because this right here is never true, an equality that's never true. That means the radius of convergence will be zero. But then if you refer back to right here, and let me write it down uh, right here. Um, the power series that we have, n to the n times x to the n, it still converges at one number only. It converges only when x is equal to zero. Why? Because if you plug in zero into here, you're pretty much just adding a bunch of zeros, right? So this is pretty much the conclusion. Once again, to find the interval of convergence, our goal is to find out for what value of x will this power series converge. Well, this right here, a power series will always converge at the center of the power series. The center right here is zero. So when you plug in zero into x, you will produce a bunch of zeros. Okay, so this is it. And then once again, let me just make a note on the side. If the question was, find the interval of convergence of this, and goes from one to infinity, n to the n, and then instead of x, instead of x to the n, maybe you have x, to the, uh, x minus three to the n. Then I will just tell you, the r will still be zero because you, if you run through all this stuff right here, you will still end up with infinity. The r will still be zero because this inequality is never true. But then, once again, this converges only when x is at the center. But then the center in this case is 3. So you only converge when x is equal to 3. And you can see that if you plug in this 3 into this 3, 3 minus 3 is 0, and you are just adding a bunch of zeros. Okay? So this is the idea um, of um, a situation that you get the radius of conversion to be zero, and then the power series only converges at its at its center. Okay, so that's it.